all this other stuff. I call the uh, February 20th, 2018 Finance Committee meeting to order at 6.48 p.m. The chair would uh, entertain a motion for consideration of claims. Your Honor, we would like to make a consideration of claims for $220,728.48. Uh, Elaine uh, on credits cards the amount of one thousand. $761.11, and manual checks written for $5, I'm proud of that, payroll liabilities for uh, February 1st in the amount of $207,773.39, for a total of $430,000. $267.98. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? No, Your Honor, I've been over it. There's, it looks good just like it always does. Okay. Looks great. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Anything from uh, City Administrator or Finance Director? I have nothing at this time. And Your Honor. Okay, then the meeting is adjourned at 6.49 p.m. I now call the February 20th, 2018 regular meeting of the Riverton City Council to order at 7 p.m. Uh, Council Member Peterson will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and after that, Council Member Hancock will offer an invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the opportunity we have to meet tonight uh, as a city council and as uh, citizens who are interested in and uh, trying to support the work of the city. We ask that it please help us that we can be guided by thee to make choices that will benefit um, the citizens of our uh, great community. We ask thee that we can continue to uh, be able to understand and better fulfill the needs of those who reside here and that we will be guided by thee in all that we do. We thank thee for all of our many blessings and we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> Will the city clerk please conduct the roll call? Yes, Your Honor. Councilman Lance Godey. Here. Councilman Tim Hancock. Here. Councilman Kyle Larson. Here. Councilman John Peterson. Here. Mayor John Baker. I am present. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion to excuse uh, council members Jibben and Bailey from this evening's meeting. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mayor votes aye and motion passes. I declare we have a quorum. <clears throat> the chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Motion to approve the agenda as written. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the agenda? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mayor votes aye and motion passes. Communications from the floor, citizens' comments. Anyone in the audience wishing to address the council regarding an item that's already on the agenda will be given an opportunity to speak later on. Uh, I would ask those individuals who wish to address the council at this time to approach the podium and identify yourselves for the record. Consent agenda this evening. Would the city clerk please read the consent agenda items by title only? Yes, Your Honor. Approval of the minutes, February 6, 2018, regular council meeting. Approval of the minutes, February 13, 2018, council work session, goal setting meeting. Approval of the minutes, February 20th, 2018, finance committee meeting. Approval, approval of the finance committee recommendations for February 20th, 2018. Are there any items that require further discussion? Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. Uh, the recommendation from the finance committee um, <coughs> to approve claims in the amount of $220,728.48, Elon credit card in the amount of $1,761.11, manual check in the amount of $5, payroll liabilities for February 1st, 2018 in the amount of $207,773.39 for a total of $430,267.98. Chair, we entertain a motion to approve consent. So moved. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mayor votes aye and the motion passes. Uh, contract for services quarterly report. Uh, we're going to hear from uh, PAWS, Riverton Volunteer Fire Department, and the Fremont County Good Samaritan Center uh, this evening. Uh, PAWS. Good evening. Good evening. Since the last time we were here, we did a few uh, fundraising events. Uh, one of them was our Santa Paws. Oh, you're, you are Kent? Kent. And this is Gina, our shelter manager, Gina Gladman. Pardon me? Gina Gladman. Gina Gladman. Okay. All right. So since the last time we were here, we did our Santa Paws fundraiser. I'd just like to thank uh, Chief Murphy for the use of his Santa suit and for actually being there as a judge. And the fire chief was there as well, so we'd just like to thank them for their help. That was a pretty successful event. We raised a little over $800 with it. And then we did a pasta fundraiser that brought in almost $1,000. And we were also at the craft fairs, which brought in almost another $1,000 again there. We also did a few community adoption events. One of them was at Wyoming Wireless just next door here in which we adopted 10 cats that day. So that was a very successful event. We did another one out at Gunners Automotive in which we did one dog and one cat got adopted. And then we also did a really good one up at Sweetwater Garden in which we adopted seven dogs that day. So those are, have been pretty successful for us and we plan on doing a few more yet again this spring once it warms up just a little bit. So the other big thing that we've been doing is replacing some of the kennels down at the shelter. Uh, we've had these wire kennels that have been pretty beat up and they're just uh, incubator for all sorts of disease. So we had the opportunity to purchase stainless steel kennels in almost basically brand new condition from Dr. Weber's old vet practice. And we've actually been fortunate that the community has stepped up and given us donations just specifically so that we could buy those. And we've had them for just about two months now. And so we're just kind of waiting to see as things progress that hopefully it's gonna help cut down on the spread of disease and just make it easier to keep things a little bit cleaner. So just coming up here on March 24th, we have our annual Easter Bunny photos and cupcake contest. That'll be at the Senior Center, uh, Saturday, March 24th from two to four. So that's our next fundraising event. And then just as kind of an ongoing thing, we do kennel sponsorships. A uh, business, an individual, whoever can sponsor a dog kennel for $300 per year or a cat kennel for $75 per year. And we just have signs made that go up on each kennel, just in recognition of that and for those who help us out. And it's just a nice little ongoing deal that we've got so that if anyone's interested in doing that, we do have some kennels available. So. We encourage anyone to just contact Gina and get that set up. So I'll just have Gina talk about some of the animals that we served, our statistics for uh, 2017. Good evening. Um, we had the intake for 2017. We had 741 animals come through our doors, 213 cats, um, 528 dogs. And um, we were able to successfully adopt 122 cats of those. Um, and we actually had a record year. We returned to owner 23 cats. So um, unfortunately, cats are not um, an animal that's claimed very often. Um, we transferred out two. Um, the stock doc was looking for a barn kitty and um, an office kitty. So we were able to transfer some out to them. Um, and unfortunately, like um, Kent was saying, with those kennels being porous and um, the upper respiratory with um, no dividers between the kennels, they spread like wire, wildfire through our shelter. So um, we've got a new treatment protocol um, for the, the cat herpes, but we did have to euthanize 88 cats last year. So, and the majority of those was for the upper respiratory infection. So. And with the dogs, we had 179 mm -hmm. adoptions. We had 214 that we returned to owners. And then last year, um, 
with the influx of dogs and um, mama dogs, we actually had 32 nursing puppies in our shelter through the months of June and July. So um, unfortunately with no adequate quarantine space, we had Parvo come through, we had Distemper um, come through, um, Mange, so we had a lot of disease last year. So um, we did have 23 euthanasias, um, 16 were for aggression. And the way we do that is if they're not successfully, um, if we can't safely adopt them out into the community, we do not. Um, if they're aggression to people um, or aggression to animals that are so severe, we, we're not comfortable doing that. And then um, we had seven that were euthanized um, because of distemper, um, parvo, and then we had one that was so old and arthritic we had to medically um, euthanize him. And then we work with other shelters across the state um, and Utah, and we were able to transfer out 91 dogs. So for a total of 512 that were were moved through our doors. So um, just a statistic, our length of stay, um, cats stay 4.7 times um, longer than kittens. Our kittens, they, they pretty much are highly adoptable, so they stay less than a month. So whereas adult cats average 132 days at our shelter. So with those kennel sponsorships, what they do is they feed the animals in that kennel for the entire year. So um, unfortunately, we are never low enough on animals that the, the kennel isn't being used. So, And then our dogs, adult dogs stay they two and a half times longer than puppies. Our dogs stay an average of 81 days, and our puppies stay an average of 36 days. So. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Okay. We, we appreciate the partnership. We do too. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, the Riverton Volunteer Fire Department. Hi, I'm Fire Chief Corey Higgs, and I brought along with me Assistant Chief Henry DeClerc this time. Uh -huh. um, we're glad to be here again. Uh, currently on our roster, we have 43 total men. We have 35 active firefighters, five retired firemen, and three probationary firemen. Last year, we had 242 calls for service, and uh, so far this year, we're up to 18. Uh, we're 100% volunteers, you guys know. We spend a lot of time away from our families while answering alarms, training, and maintaining equipment. We really appreciate what the city does to help us out on our mission to save lives and property. We are appreciative to the police department for dispatching and helping us at scenes, um, the water department for providing and maintaining the hydrants. We worked last summer with uh, Dave Paskett and his crew, and uh, we went through the ISO. Train, not training, excuse me, the ISO, it's a revisit that hasn't happened since about 2000? Yeah, I think it's been so Anyways, our rating used to be a seven. We've knocked that up to four. So that's a, that's a good improvement. And this is what we do with our funds that we receive from the city. We have our pension fund. It's money used in conjunction with the Riverton Fire District to provide a pension for active roster members through the Wyoming Retirement System. And then we have the Benevolent Fund, and that's a fund in case of death of an active member where the beneficiary would receive $2,000 immediately upon the death. And then we use some of that money to help with our midwinter fire school, seed money to get it going. And as you guys know, that brings in about 400 firemen each year for that weekend. So that's all we have to brief you on. Do you have any questions? I know, uh, Mayor Baker, you visited with uh, Secretary uh, Jeff Keel last summer. The I did. And I know you guys had a pretty good visit. We did. Okay. Do you have any other questions? I don't. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. No, just to express a thank you to what they do. You bet. You, you well, bet. see them moving around a lot, so it's good to have you guys out there helping and protecting us. So We appreciate we're it, and we're honored to serve. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Corey. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys, for right. coming. We'll see you next time. Oh, yeah, I bet you will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Fremont County, Good Samaritan. 
Thank you guys for seeing me today. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm the new director for the Fremont County Good Samaritan Center. My name is Tristine Grover. And I was hired by Peter Dvorak back in May to be the administrative assistant and possibly somebody that could take over his position if his health made it so that he was unable to continue on. Um, at the end of July, Peter left for medical leave, and then I became acting director at that time. Last month, I was voted in as the new director, and I am looking forward to being able to fulfill that position and continue working with the community. Currently, we have four staff positions. There is myself as the executive director, two attendants that are around during the at the evening and in the night. Then there is a live-in resident that is there all night and through the weekend. Um, these positions came about from seeing some issues that were made clear by having only one other staff member and sometimes a caseworker or administrative assistant. The on-site live-in night and weekend attendant didn't get enough time off and became burnt out very quickly, so there was a lot of issues that would come from having just that one person there. There are not very many people that want to volunteer to be at the shelter during the evenings when most of our clients and residents are there. This made it difficult for not only staff, but the residents to stay in a secure and safe environment. With the added staff, there has been more accountability as well as accessibility to not only our clients, but those that are in our community. Due to our main funding source, the Community Service Block Grant, we are required to have a drug and alcohol free property. In October, we purchased a new breathalyzer. Since having the new breathalyzer, it has helped staff to be able to use more than just their observations when it comes to clients checking in as well as the residents being on the property. Another observation we have made since purchasing this breathalyzer is that we have fewer clients that are staying short term. We still have a few clients that will check in for a few days and then leave. But most of our residents are been working towards their own sobriety while trying to get back up on their feet. Our program holds them accountable every day with maintaining this sobriety and this has helped many of our residents be successful in gaining self-sufficiency. One of our latest success stories comes from a couple that checked into our facility in December. This married couple had been on our radar for a while. They were being evicted from their current residence because they were unable to pay their rent. Their landlord had come to speak with me in September of last year, and I told him that they would have to be sober in order to check into our program. When I was gone one day over the weekend, um, one of them was dropped off at the Good Samaritan Center. She was extremely intoxicated, and when we have clients that come that are intoxicated, we refer them to the Detox Center, the Center of Hope, and we hope that they will come back sober and be able to continue on with our program. Once she was out, her and her husband wanted to check in, but then they never returned after checking in. They disappeared for a couple of months, and then in December, they came back to our facility. They had both been sober for about 30 days by this time and they had been staying with a friend and the place they were staying was no longer safe for them. She had recently gained back her employment that she had lost and was going to start work the next week. While, here, while there, the couple passed every breathalyzer and they were able to save their money and get into their own rental after being with us for a little over a month. Um, this couple was definitely an, ex an exception to what we normally see. The amount of time that they spent trying to get into housing was very short compared to the majority of our clients. We expect them to be there at least two to three months depending on how their resources come. Um, they have to be able to save their money for background checks and being able to make deposits, which can be very difficult for some of them to get. One of the hardest success stories and greatest learning experiences we have had so far this year is with a family of seven that have been staying with us since the end of September. When this family first checked in, we thought they would only be with us for about two weeks, but instead they are with us for four months. When they first arrived, we thought they would be getting into the Eagles Hope program, and we found out that they were not able to hold that many at that time. They were going through a lot of their revamping and painting and trying to redo their facility, and so they ended up being with us for quite a while. The seven family members were made up of three sisters and their children. The oldest sister was handicapped and the middle sister was her guardian as well as the mother of a four-year-old and a six-month-old. The other sister was the single mother of two boys, a five-year-old and a three-year-old. The biggest challenge they first came up against was trying to find work or getting into a program to help them with rental assistance. Being single moms as well as having a sister with 
a disability, we thought getting into housing would be a lot easier for them because of the programs that are out there. We soon found out that housing and becoming self-sufficient was not going to be as easy as we thought. The one sister found work within about two weeks, and this is typically what we see when our clients are out looking for jobs every day. They're turning in multiple applications. Um, one problem that we run across with a lot of our clients is there is really a lack of employment in Riverton that is hard for many of our clients to find because most of the jobs in the community require a lot of work training and other skills that they have not had time to accomplish or have not been able to accomplish. The entry level jobs for fast food, restaurants, and retail the retailers such as Walmart are what end up being their first source of income, but usually this is not enough to quickly be out on their own and they have to stay to get that money put back to have that ability to be independent. Um, while the one sister was working, the other sister stayed at the Good Samaritan with the children and the disabled sister during the day. Most of our clients are supposed to be out from 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon out looking for work, out putting in job applications, and when they are working, taking that time off from work to go out and do their housing and be able to get spot jobs or whatever they need in order to gain some more resources to be able to be out on their own. Being her guardian made it so that the sister either had to put her sister into a program for disabled adults or stay with her for the majority of the time. So we felt that her focusing on getting into a housing program or getting into some of the low income housings was the better option for her to focus on. But the waiting list is very long. Tribal members often have access to other programs, but their waiting list is also very large, and it takes a lot of time for them to go through those programs. By the time this family left our program, they were still number 11 on the waiting list through the Arapaho tribe, and we never did hear how long they would have had to wait for their Section 8 housing, which is what a lot of our clients try to apply for. And it is a program, a housing program that's sponsored through the federal government. In January, a low-income apartment became available, and the family was able to move into an apartment together by the end of January. <laughs> at first, we thought it was only going to be the sister that was employed, but thankfully, the manager at the apartment complex was able to work out something so that they could stay together until another apartment became available for the rest of the family. A lot of the housing, they have specific guidelines of who all can be there and how many people can be in each one of their units. While we miss seeing the kids every day, we are so happy that they were able to finally get back up on their feet and be in a stable environment. Before this apartment became available, the one sister was looking at having to send her two boys to live with the paternal grandparents in Montana just so that they could be in some type of housing. This was a difficult situation and would have been hard on these children who had already had their lives turned upside down on numerous occasions, but they had also recently just gotten back with their mom before coming to our facility. When I spoke with them a couple of weeks ago, the one boy was wanting to come back to the Good Samaritan because he missed being able to see the staff and see me, and he really wanted to ride again in my spaceship, which is my minivan. He thinks it's a spaceship. <laughs> the family was a challenge for us because we really didn't have a good setup for that many children and more women. We are really set up for um, just a few women at a time or a couple of children and that was a lot to take in all at one time and try to still help other women that are in the community. Right now we currently only have one bathroom in our women's facility that is operable and we, are ha we only have twin size beds. One thing we are trying to get purchased is heavy duty bunk beds and some full size beds. We have two different rooms that we are trying to get set up. We have one that we're wanting to put in four of our larger bunk beds that can hold adults and then set up a little middle section for our families with some full size beds and have it be a little bit more family friendly. Um, one problem that Peter had talked about when I first got there is that we had bathrooms that were in that dorm room, but they had not been functioning, and he never really did talk about why they were not functioning or how to get them operable. He would just talk about how it was going to cost too much money in order to fix that. So I'm hoping that I will get with contractors this spring and try to figure out how best we can either turn those bathrooms into what we need them for by redoing the pipes or whatever it will take, or trying to figure out how to add on or change some things and remodel so that we can have another bathroom up and running. 
We have definitely seen more women and children that need a safe place to be, and often we have to tell them we are currently full. Right before I got here, I had chaos <laughs> go down at the shelter with, we had a woman with three kids walk in, and then another woman with another child, and then two, mo two other women. And we had already had two women before I left for the end of the day. So trying to have more room available is really important for all the women that are in this community right now. We have tried making it work to have more women than the six that are supposed to be there, but it oftentimes creates problems, especially with only having one bathroom because that's a lot of people trying to use one bathroom during the day. I recently let Sydney from Fremont County Alliance know that I would support a grant she is trying to get that would put myself, her, and the director from Eagles Hope on a committee where we would meet and discuss applications that are coming from women through our programs. And and the big thing is the woman has to be a victim of some kind and this grant would allow them to or us to pay for housing or get them into a safe environment and many of the women that we see have been a victim at some point in their life and so I'm really looking forward to working with her on getting that grant. Another thing that we are seeing that needs to be addressed by our facility is the security of our women's dorm. Our two buildings are not connected, and so we have our men's side and our main office and everything is right there, and then we have our women's building that is the older built, has had three different expansions on it, and it's not the best <laughs> as far as trying to have it secure. While all of our doors are inaccessible without a key, it does not mean that the people that are inside can not let people in and out and that I think is one of our biggest struggles is we don't always have the best individuals that come through our doors and them letting their friends in or whoever needs to come in they will let them in and out and it's hard to maintain that without getting a better security system and having more alarms and more locks. I have been taking bids on different monitoring systems through different companies throughout the city and trying to figure out how to implement our old security system. Since I've been employed there, the cameras have never been functioning and from what I've been told, there's a lot of them that have not been functioning for a while. And we really want to be able to provide our residents a safe place to be while they are working towards gaining self-sufficiency self and independent living. Another group of clientele that we struggle with helping is the mentally ill. Oftentimes we have clients that have some type of mental health issue and many of them are not medicated or they are unable to afford their medication. Paperwork to get them help is hard for them to understand or know exactly what is needed. Waiting for disability takes months if not years to get on and we struggle with trying to help this population because we are just not set up for having the mental health issues that come with some of these adults and being able to get an adult to go to a meeting or go to the doctor to get their medication that's right for them is really a struggle because you can't make an adult do something they do not want to do. And another thing is a lot of the resources in our community are ones that they have a wait list for anything that is av available for anybody that's going through different programs. Um, with the funds from the city, we utilize with you guys pay our utilities and we're able to save thousands of dollars during the year. The quarterly payment of $437.50 is used to pay the remaining balance of our utility usage. We currently only rely on this contribution, the CSBG grant and a small grant from the county. And so any other funds that come through is we rely on donations that come in from the community or other organizations. On average, we are spending at least $100 per week to buy basic food items such as bread and milk, and we thankfully have had donations come in, such as meat and other goods that help supplement the cost of feeding our residents, and we also provide meals to people that are in the community while we are serving meals. We have two churches that currently provide a monthly meal, and every now and then we have other organizations that bring in a meal or two. Each day we serve at least two meals to our clients and there are normally at least five people in the community that come in for one meal or more. We also have to use funds to pay for supplies such as laundry, soap, paper goods, cleaning supplies and other items that run the day-to-day -day operation of our facility. 
we had to cash in a CD that was maturing in order to have more money available for operating costs last week. We are also starting to make purchases needed to fix miscellaneous things throughout the facility. In October, we purchased a new dishwasher and an oven. Our old dishwasher was no longer working and our gas stove had only one burner that was functioning. Having the dishwasher operating has helped keep our clients healthy. We have a lot of clients that come through that are prone to illness or have other ailments and making it sanitary is very much a necessity. We have been meeting on a regular basis as board members with Mr. Dvorak being gone. The board wants to put more funding into our facility and have a re-grand opening sometime later this year. We're working to together to develop new policies and procedures to better serve our clients in the community. We also are trying to organize a fundraiser to help offset some of the costs that we are inquiring with trying to improve our facility. In December, we were able to utilize the group that was here in Riverton from AmeriCorps to do some much needed painting on the inside side of our other two buildings. The majority of the inside of these buildings have now been painted and are looking better every day. This has helped residents with taking better care of our facility while they are staying here and the new atmosphere has established that our program is revamping and making positive changes to help those that are staying with us. We're continuing to do minor touch-ups and we will keep making improvements throughout the next few months. In January, we participated in the point in time homeless count that provides a head count for people that are homeless in our community. This was sponsored by the Volunteers of America and numerous agencies helped put out a resource fair or help count people that they came across. Unfortunately, what this count is not able to do is count our community members that are staying with friends and family, which is where we see a lot of our clients coming from. They no longer are able to stay with their friends or family for whatever reason. And we decided to keep on meeting on a regular basis as the different agencies with the VOA and other entities to create another type of coalition group in order to serve all of our clients better in the community. As of this morning, we currently have 10 residents, including our live-in staff member. Like I said, we had, I think, five more and plus I think maybe two more kids so another seven that are staying there tonight that were not there this morning. On average this has been a typical number and we oftentimes see a lot more. We believe that there are not as many residents currently due to following through with our alcohol policy. We also try to refer people to other programs if they qualify, such as our veteran population that comes into our program. Veterans normally are out within two weeks or less if they are working with the VOA service coordinator. In the past year, we have had six clients that have said that they are veterans and we have gotten them to the VOA services and helped get them out as fast as we can. I checked the statistics for the amount of clients that have stayed with us in the past year, and there have been 147 clients that are unduplicated who have been entered into our program. They've stayed with us for at least a night since February 20th of 2017. Some of these clients have come more than once, and this does not show how many have come in and out. There is a lot that will come in and eventually leave to go back with family or friends, or they have something else happen. They go to jail, they go to detox, and they come in and out on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. The majority of our clients fall into the 30 to 50-year-old age group, and the next highest age bracket falls into the 18 to 30 years of age. We serve some seniors and some children, but the majority of our clients are single people who have little to no work experience. We have around half of our clients that are white and the other half are Native American. A small portion are Hispanic, African American, or multiracial. In the past year, we have had 62 of the 147 clients say they were living with family or friends a week prior to coming to the shelter. Those who are unsuccessful usually go back to living with their friends and family. 82 of these clients have had no income when they check in, and only 27 have SSI or the Social Security income or disability income. I believe we're moving in the right direction to better serve the city of Riverton. There are many changes we want to continue making to better serve our community. And I want to thank you guys for everything that you are able to provide and being on this council and help provide more resources for our community. Are there any questions that I can answer for you? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for your report. We appreciate uh, the, the work that you do. and. And uh, please keep us uh, posted as uh, you uh, <coughs> discover what you need to do to fix that building up. Thank you. Okay. 
Your Honor, I thought we had somebody up when we were <coughs> looking at that previously. Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, okay, so the next item on the agenda is public hearing consideration of the 2018-2019 liquor license renewals. Could we have the city clerk's report, please? Yes, Your Honor. Before you tonight for council's consideration are the renewal applications that have been submitted for the licensing term of April 1st of 2018 through March 31st of 2019. Annually, each liquor license holder is required to submit a renewal application to the licensing authority, which is the city of Riverton. This year, we received 33 applications for renewal. Of those, uh, 22 were retail, two were club licenses, eight were restaurant licenses, and we had one bar and grill license. Um, these application fees generated approximately $40,000 in revenue to the city of Riverton. Staff began the renewal process in November of 2017. Uh, this process is approximately a three-month process from start to finish. This year, um, Deputy City Clerk Megan Sims managed the renewal process and did a wonderful job. It takes a lot um, to go through all the applications, so I appreciate her help on that. Um, with the renewals, there are several items that we verify. Um, for instance, we verify that the establishment has met the purchasing requirements for the year. The licensee is authorized to sell alcohol within the establishment um, and this is this involves verifying lease agreements or that they own the building this year we have one application whose lease expires midway through the licensing term um, and that's for Stex or Rocky Mountain discount liquor um, Stex is currently in renegotiations of their lease agreement, which is set to expire in May of 2018. This, however, does not disqualify council from approving their renewal application. There just needs to be a contingency um, requiring receipt of the new lease agreement before the license will actually be issued to them. Staff, as well as the liquor division, has verified that the applications are complete. All the proper fees have been paid and the proper notice to the public has been advertised. Therefore, staff is recommending approval of the liquor licenses, the 33 applications that were submitted, with the contingency that Stex will submit an updated lease agreement that is valid for the entire licensing term, not just through May of 2018. Thank you. Uh, Chair would entertain a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. <clears throat> it's been moved and seconded that we open a public hearing. Is there any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Fair votes aye and the motion passes. I now declare the public hearing to be open. The hearing will be conducted in accordance with state statutes with other applicable laws. I would ask those individuals wishing to address the council to approach the podium and identify yourselves for the record. Your Honor, seeing as nobody's come forward, I recommend that we close public hearing. Second. <clears throat> Been moved and seconded that we close the public hearing. Uh, any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes, and I now declare the public hearing to be closed. The chair would entertain a motion for the approval of the 2018-2019 liquor license renewal applications. Your Honor, I'd move that we approve the uh, liquor license applications uh, as have already been noted with the contingency mentioned by uh, Kristen Watson regarding the Stex liquor license. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. Lance. Your Honor, I just want to take an opportunity to ask the Chief of Police uh, to give any report on any concerns with any of the applications. <clears throat> Your Honor. Go ahead. We have no uh, concerns at this time with any of the establishments. All of the owners have worked very well with us over the last year, well, ever since I've been here, specifically over the last year. Uh, anytime anybody has any type of special event, uh, we go meet with them. They've always been very uh, welcoming and, and willing to do what we ask them to do. And we do these little operations where we send in, <clears throat> excuse me, underaged kids to try to buy alcohol. Uh, everybody has done very well with that. All of their employees have been tips trained all on their own, not because we've asked them to. Um, so we absolutely have no issues with any of them. Thank you. Any other? Ready to vote? 
Yes, sir. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mayor vote sign. The motion passes. Next item is the adoption of Ordinance 18-001, third and final reading, Wind River Internet Franchise Agreement. Will the city clerk please read Ordinance number 18-001 by title only? Yes, Your Honor. Proposed Ordinance number 18-001 on third and final reading, an ordinance granting a franchise to Northern Arapaho Tribal Industries doing business as Wind River Internet, WRI, to operate and maintain a telecommunication system in the city of Riverton, Wyoming. Chair would entertain a motion to adopt Ordinance 18-001 on third and final reading. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. So would the city clerk please conduct a roll call vote? Yes, Your Honor. Councilman Lance Godey. Aye. Councilman Tim Hancock. Aye. Councilman Kyle Larson. Yes. Councilman Sean Peterson. Aye. Mayor John Baker. Uh, I vote yes and the motion passes. Uh, the next item is council committee reports and council member roundtable. Mr. Peterson, have you got anything for us tonight? I have a couple things for you. I'll be quick though. Uh, last night we met at the Fremont County School District Rec Board uh, and it was the night that we discussed all the applications came forward. We awarded about $185,000 um, to the local sports and functions and groups and there was everything from a cooking ninja class to baseball to soccer so it was it was really fun to be a part of that and to be able to help out with opportunities for the youth around here uh, i also met with the uh, community service block grant uh, i got asked to sit on the board of directors for that so we met today um, so I will be working with Gary Michaud and the group on that. So that'll be fun to see that also come to fruition. And then um, that's it, Your Honor. That's it? That's it. That's all I got. Great. Yeah, that uh, block grant does a lot of good in Riverton. So you'll, uh, you'll learn some things as you uh, participate in that. Yeah, I'm excited about that. And good. Thank you for being willing to do that. Well, uh, the only thing I have is I'm looking forward to going to the solid waste meeting. Normally it's on a Monday, but we had President's Day, and so it's on a, it's on a tomorrow. <clears throat> Find out what's going on in the garbage business. <clears throat> okay. Tim? I don't have anything. Nothing? Lance? i just uh, chime in as well with uh, Councilman Peterson. I was able to attend the rec board last night and it was a great learning experience for me. Um, really appreciated the, the proposals and it was great to have more money than what was requested. So we were able to do a really good job of, of uh, approving the request. So that's always a good feeling to spend somebody else's money and give them, <laughs> give them some, some uh, opportunity for expansion of, of a variety of services. So that was fantastic. Good. The, li you. the line we used last night is we gave everything everybody asked and then some. And then, and then some. It'll be increased a couple, so it was, it was fun. Good, that's great. Yeah. Okay, city administrator's report. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a reminder that I'll be attending WAM along with a number of other council, a number of council members. This for the rest of this week. We look forward to that. Uh, some of the bills that we've been tracking include Senate File 40 with regard to air service moving to second reading tomorrow. Um, our public works director has done a very good job of tracking that and staying directly on top of it as part of uh, his duties, so that's appreciated. Um, we've been tracking House Bill 13 and 14 dealing with extraterritorial zoning jurisdictions, though both of those are have been introduced as of this afternoon to the floor, so we will be having some more conversation with regard to that. Uh, we've followed other bills, including the Chicken Freedom Act, the vaping policy, and the food trucks, um, all of which are no longer on the table. Uh, the most important one is House Bill 001 with regard to the $105 million in funding. And um, 
if anybody is interested, they can always go to our Wyoming Association of Municipalities website and track, do the bill tracking through that site. Um, those are updated uh, regularly. So we're very appreciative to the WAM staff for their work and their diligence in that way. I would remind council that no, the North Federal meeting is tomorrow at 6 p.m. here. Our pu uh, public works director will be in attendance uh, to answer some questions, as will Chief Murphy. Um, so if anybody is interested, it will be in these chambers. And Planning Commission will be hearing, will be reviewing the parking ordinance, uh, parking table changes that have been proposed from the last time we mentioned those with uh, Ironworks. We have done some modifications to that and are going to propose that to Planning Commission before it comes to Council. Your Honor, that is all I have at this point. I would stand for any questions if necessary. Any questions, Lance? Your Honor, um, Tony, is is it, I mean, I had planned on attending the meeting tomorrow night uh, for the North Federal reconstruction, but I wasn't, I guess I better double check and see who all else might be attending to see if that creates an issue or whether, um, I don't know. No, you might be by yourself. <laughs> okay. Maybe. I, I think uh, Tim's going to WAM. Oh, that's yes, right. Sir. And Sean's going to Wham, and that's I'm right. going to Wham. Okay. Okay. And Tony's going to Wham. Okay. All right. And well, I'll plan on being there then. I may be the only city. You and you and Kyle might be the only guys left in town. Okay. Okay. Good deal. That that's probably just as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I will be there. All right. Good. Thank you. Your Honor, I do. Uh, Say thanks to Tony about the uh, for that Wind River Internet. I know that was a lot of work, painstaking effort, and your patience in learning the new systems and then learning to deal with the individuals as a whole. So thank you for your work on that. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. Go ahead. I just wanted <laughs> to say, obviously, um, our early winter meeting on proper ways of managing snow removal. Uh, obviously, we're in success because we have an empty courtroom in here. And uh, so I want to say thank you for the snow removal. Thank you for uh, amenable ways of removing it. And, uh, you know, that, that just saves us a lot of of heartache when you can get that snow off the ground and we can get back and forth to work and the people coming out early running the graders etc the snow removal the sanding is really appreciated thank you for the service your honor councilman thank you i'll pass that on to the crews to do the work you bet and it might be might be appropriate to mention the sidewalks, the condition of sidewalks. So, if uh, people who have sidewalks clear could uh, could think about that and and uh, try to get out and get it done. I know it's really cold. Uh, I did I had to do mine in stages the, the other day because it would uh, soak through. I had to go in and warm up several times before I got it all done. But but. Uh, uh, we appreciate. Uh, I know. I noticed driving down Main Street that almost every almost every business had cleared their sidewalks early in the morning, and appreciate that. Um, executive session. Uh, <clears throat> we'll have an executive session this evening to consider litigation to which our governing body is or may be a party in accordance with uh, Wyoming Statute 16-4-405A3. So I'd entertain a motion to, to uh, uh, recess into uh, an executive session. So moved. Second. Uh, we'd invite... Uh, uh, Your Honor, I would, I would recommend uh, Kristen Kristen. Our, our public, uh, I'm sorry, our HR, our clerk and HR director, our city attorney, and myself. Okay, all right. So we'll do that at the present time. Uh, we don't anticipate any action. No.